All right, my friends, welcome to episode 143, the E3 episode of Prof and Dev Play Games. I'm the Professor Larry at Prof Plays Games on Twitter, and over there is Anthony, the dev, chugging away at uh, Summer Speak on Twitter. Man, how's that uh, E3 crunch going, man? Uh, I, I, I'm done for the moment. Oh, nice. I'm not going to. I'm not going to crunch anymore. Okay. Um, it's ready to go then, huh? Yeah, as ready as it's going to be. Yeah, um, good. No last minute tinkering. So, no, no, no destabilizing what we have. We're all signed off going like, this is this is fine. This kind of gets across mechanically what we want, which is all that it's supposed to do right now. And right. then we can get some feedback and, and make adjustments and continue on. So That pineapple is ready to grill. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when are the meetings that you guys have? Is it like Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Um, one, uh, there was one last fri- Friday. Oh, shit. another one Monday, which okay. I'm not there for. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, one tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, there's a few, and then Thursday. Okay, and then the, so. the big one on Friday? No, oh. this past Friday. Oh, the one that... You were really excited. It about already this. it already happened. Oh yeah. shit! I thought it was this next Friday. No. Oh oh oh! Damn. Uh, people people wanted to meet pre E three. It yeah. was easier for them to meet oh, before sure. all the hustle and bustle. Yeah. So. Well, I'm, so I'm, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't down there for that, but it went well. I got I got the scoop on how that went. So. Good good. good. Any any swag for you? No. Nah. No, no swag. Nah. Not uh, yet. Hopefully, hopefully a contract. Better than swag. That'd be a nice swag. I'd be yeah. okay with that. <laughs> well, this episode, of course, we're talking about E3. It kicked off yesterday. Eh, it started with a whimper yesterday and kind of kicked in uh, today. Uh, yeah. The, uh, E3 minus one and whatever days. Uh, tomorrow, I guess, was the is the official day when people can get into the building, perhaps? the, the, the I, I think so. I don't know what Monday... Like, I can... I'll get there and I'll be able to get my badge. But yeah. it sounds like the actual show doesn't start until Tuesday. Oh, Oh, so it's Tuesday through Friday. I think I think tomorrow is like press can go through. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, for the press but, people at least. Yeah, because uh, I can't get in until. Oh, you can't so. get in until Tuesday because you're not press. Yeah. Ah, I got it. But you're you're the dev. They want to talk to you. Oh, they don't know. I that. mean, we have they dev passes, that but that oh, doesn't. Yeah. I think if we had had, they have area get little tiny offices to meet to do meetings in, but we did. So. Oh yeah. So I'm coming up to meet you. I'm excited. You are. I'm going to see you Wednesday at E3, and I thought about getting a pass so I could go in. If there are no day passes. It's just a, like a three-day pass. Yeah. Um, which, uh, don't uh, worry about it. I'm going to see if, I, if I'm using their badge. And if they aren't, I'll just we can just go. Oh, my God. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, but it's you know, cool if it doesn't happen, but it'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll, I, I'll ask to see yeah, if yeah. who's doing it or if they're cool. doing other things. Okay. That'd be awesome. But it, regardless, it'd be cool to see you, so that's, that's all I care yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and so I guess this episode, we're going to talk about uh, EA, which happened yesterday, and then Microsoft, which happened uh, this afternoon, and Bethesda just finished, and I guess Devolver Digital is happening tonight, but obviously we have nothing to say about that one, because yeah, we yeah. know what's happening. It'd probably be weird as shit like last year, so I assume. Yeah, I would expect so, but better than EA's. Fuck me, man. So I guess best part Let's of EA... Let's just start. Let's just start. <laughs> fuck, uh, I thought Andrea Renee did a good job hosting with what she had. There were some cringy moments however um but man what the fuck that was uh, uh my friend brad here sent me a a text of angry joe that reviewer guy who does whatever youtube uh, videos yeah i know what he is yeah well he said that was basically a press conference for the shareholders and not for gamers and i thought that's that's pretty apt oh, man that was fucking bad it was really bad uh it was awkward stilted didn't really like more and more, I, I agree with, was it Sony last year, where they just were like, yep, we're going to talk for a few minutes and then just show games. We're not going to we're not going to do this whole long thing because people that make games tend to not be good public speakers. Public speaking is a skill you work on and practice and learn. And I guarantee you from experience, the actual act of making games doesn't hone that skill <laughs> right exactly i was thinking was there any point where they could have put them in like a public speaking course for a couple of weeks and i'm thinking no they're coding though or whatever you yeah coding or do. designing whatever like it's just not there's no time right no there's no time and that's just it's also like is this really worth it for one thing yeah, for, yeah, for like, like a five minute stint right all of these i'm just like stop talking just don't have devs talks just like just show the game just I thought... show 
or pre-recorded stuff interviews yeah. that'd be even better well, like if you could just like pre-record stuff well that's when nintendo is fucking ahead of the curve just like no we're just gonna pre-record this and just like make it look good i hope to god square enix is learned from their couple years ago like this pre-recorded thing better be good um, so square enix is tomorrow right yeah tomorrow uh yeah. ubisoft tomorrow squares tomorrow sony's tomorrow i'll be making my way to the airport during squares it seems and then sony is tomorrow night so yes yeah, i'll be clear. landed and I'll be back from dinner i don't know i've been catching everything after the fact except for the last five minutes of bethesda tonight so my, yeah. my friend brad again he was texting me all the announcements from the the microsoft thing and i text him back i'm like i'm trying to go in blind please stop i'm gonna turn my phone off um but he was he was rather excited he got a lot of yeah. stuff we'll, we'll get to that later um yeah. So, but EA, man. I just want to say the the only part of the EA conference that was exciting and it was actually really, really exciting and my favorite part of E3 so far came, came from the E3 conference was when they showed Unravel 2 and at, they got to the end and they didn't show a release date. And I was like, what the, what the fuck? Why is there not a release date? And then whoever came on stage next, uh, I don't know who it was, Andrew Wilson or something, um, said, it's releasing today. It's available right now. And I just, I fucking squeaked. I was so happy. <laughs> Uh, I knew you were going to be excited about that one. Oh, my God. I was stoked. Uh, so I turned on my PS4, immediately bought it, and I played through uh, the first two levels, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but goddamn, I was very excited about that. But the rest, like, the worst thing I thought was the Command & Conquer mobile game. Um, okay. Shoutcast. Well, I want to, yeah, I want to get, there's that, and then this actually ties into the Microsoft thing as well, because they were doing that uh, Gears Funko Pop. Oh, Jesus, yeah um mobile thing uh-huh. so i i think i've just learned this too because ea did this with uh dungeon keeper years ago i was still at popcap when they put out dungeon keeper on mobile they're like let's take this old property that we haven't done anything that's known as a more niche hardcore genre of game mm-hmm. known nostalgic for that uh time period and not well known as a general ip cool Command and Conquer has more rendition, but I would still say, since you haven't done anything with it in a very long time, that not not the most uh, in your face kind of brand, right there. Right. So who is this game for then? I because the people no that idea. actually really like Command and Conquer, they want they want a new RTS, they want PC, PC RTS. Yeah, they they right. they want that. The mobile gamer has no clue what the hell Command & Conquer is, Right. doesn't care. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, is this just bound to fail? Like, And the thing with Gears Funko Pop as well, I'm like, does the, do Gears players want Funko Pop-looking Ge- Gears of War characters? Really? In a mobile game? I felt like... like I felt this, like... What is this? I felt like the the Gears sequence, obviously they're putting out these these games for a specific audience but i felt like it was trolling they're like okay here's the gears logo and it's this pop thing it's like shit and the next thing is tactics which i think looks fucking rad no that could be cool but still more but but yeah exactly but it still wasn't what people were waiting for which was gears 5 and then they showed gears 5 and it was like okay on the ea stage if you were waiting for command and conquer they show this mobile game and that's all you got and you just probably were very disappointed if you actually wanted that game on pc yeah. versus the gears fans like okay the gears pop, pop thing probably not for me if i'm a gears fan but i got gears 5 which no, my, like, my argument is not even even if they'd done another command and conquer thing or is the fact that these games have no actual audio like why is this even being done yeah for anybody it it is a game without i would say even a market even the Funko Pop Gears thing, I'm like, why are you even spending money on this? Like, for this me, doesn't, this doesn't do anything. It is looked down upon by the majority of the Gears fans, right. and general mobile audience is going to look at a Gears of War game and be like... For me, I don't think the difference, there is any difference. I think I agree with you. The only thing that makes it feel a little different to me is the fact that I think Gears has more brand recognition than Command & Conquer right now. But I feel like in both of those pivots, it was telling investors, yes, we're doing more with doing mobile. Doing mobile stuff? Yeah, yay. yeah. Something like that. And the investors who don't know if there is an audience or not or that it will be you know, hit or not, yeah. just see, oh, they're going mobile. That means more money. And then maybe the stock price goes up. I don't know. Yeah. But that's that's uh, and don't get me started on the gears thing. The fact that they keep pushing that franchise and the fact I had to look up sales now. It's sold each 
game in the series has sold less than the previous version. Yeah, but you know why they're pushing that. They need an exclusive. They need something. It, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, I'm not... A, <laughs> but I'm not still, a, but still, like, I'm just like... But it goes to show just how how few actual internal IPs they have. Right. Exclusive internal IPs they have. It just made me sad. I was like, oh, God, guys. I will say to kind of that a little bit, that however many people bought four, like those are the hardcore fans, and they're happy to have a five. And me, I've never played Gears in my life. Watching that Gears 5 trailer, that was the one Microsoft, well, one of the few trailers during that, that conference from Microsoft that I was really interested in. Like I thought it looked really good. I don't know if I'll ever play it, but I was... I don't. It looked interesting to me. Big, burly armor and emotions, plus chainsaw. That's Gears. But it was cool to have a female protagonist, I thought, in that world. I don't know if it does make before. Gears cool to me. Yeah. Oh, it was interesting to me. I don't care. I don't care, male. I played the first hand. I was bored um, yeah. by the end of it. Right, and I've so never played I'm any of them, so I don't know. And I was just like, this is just continuing, and I'm just like, God, just... it. It's the most hack night thing ever. Like trying to have such deep stories while you're cutting people in half with chainsaws and emotional. I don't know. It all, it was such a weird juxtaposition, what it wanted to say and what you were actually doing. Mm, well, that's true. Cause the, uh, that whole CGI cut scene about disobeying the order or whatever. And then you go into the game plan. It's just sawn up some weird zombie. Things oh yeah. Or whatever they are. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a, it's always been one of those where I'm like, I get it. I get what you want. Yeah, but sorry, that was distracted from EA's thing. Uh, but EA <laughs> just didn't do a whole well, lot. But, I can't but, tell. Well, like, I started by saying the thing I liked and thing I didn't like the most. Was there anything that falls into those categories for you from EA? Is it bad? The thing that I like the most was the fact that they're like, "Hey, Respawn's making a Star Wars game." That was the fucking... that has Jedi in. Yeah, but that was a terrible. And it was the reveal, stupidest man. announcement ever. Oh and I was my just god! Like, oh god, guys! Just but put... I'm like, oh, well, that's exciting to me. Like, I'm glad you're actually like basically making a sequel to the Jedi Knight series, which Can't, I loved. Chances of it getting canceled? Uh, probably pretty slim at this point. Okay. I think this is why they canceled the other one. Yeah, because so, this one was further along, probably. They, they're going to they're gonna have they're gonna have something, and it's Respawn. Respawn's good. Yeah. So, what a fucking terrible beyond, reveal, though, man. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get a sense of Anthem from what they showed. No. Like, other than it's pretty, and you play Iron Man. Um, which I knew. That was a weird so, way to roll out information about Anthem. I didn't. I felt like it was a tell instead of showing kind of thing, which I kind yeah, of wanted the, to show the, more of it. The trailer got cut together really strange because it was jumping. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of being like that smooth, you're they just like cut things out. Um, it, it was really kind of strange. I've now, it is playable at E3. Right. So people have played it at this point and they say it's really good. So good. Thumbs up. They say it. Because people were like, um, I think it was uh, one of, I've been watching a lot of uh, Jeff Keeley's. Oh, um, the Coliseum? YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, okay. he's been doing a YouTube channel over the last, the Coliseum stuff starts on Tuesday. Oh, okay. But he's been doing like pre E3 stuff with just, and he has a lot of interviews, but they were just asking people that played um, Anthem. And if they asked like, well, what is it? Does it feel like Destiny at all? Does it feel, um, and most people are like, no, this is, they said the freedom in it is way more because the freedom of mobility, like you can fly. That's just, you can go anywhere. You can attack things from all quickly navigate the maps in the world. Um, so that already made me a little bit more excited. Uh, just if honestly traversal is fun, yeah. playing a lot of breath of the wild makes me realize if traversal of the map is fun, I will really like this game a right. lot more. Right. So, but, um, but so that was good to know. I'm still curious what the game will be in the end. Like they've now said that it's not going to have like the NPC companions or anything like that. So it's yeah, more I was going to say you can't fucking. Like, I'm like, game. what? Yeah, what's the uh, <laughs> what? And people are like, oh, well, it's not a Bioware game. I'm like, well, no, it's still a Bioware game. But I don't want to hold them to like they have to have deep NPC relationships. But I'm like, I want good lore and story here and i want it presented well because that's what your company does and if you don't do that i don't care what genre you try to make if you don't do that then I'll... the thing that i'm still trying to parse is the the comments they were making about i think it was on the 
EA stage about how the story, the narrative is focused in your Fort Tarsus, like when you come in and return your quests or whatever, like all the stories yeah. are beats are there. And then when you leave out, there aren't a lot of story beats. Like you, you, you collect them in Fort Tarsus, you go out and you do your thing and you come back, but you're not really collecting new story pieces outside. And that, I didn't, that didn't seem to make sense to me. It's only, I, I could see that they're not being like NPCs you talk to out there, but I'm hoping that the aren't just dull, go out, finish the task, come back that yeah. they have. Uh, I'm sure there's some of those that you can grind because it is a multiplayer, you know, pretty much MMO ish thing. But if there's storyline missions and stuff that they have, scripting to them make them really interesting change on the fly like well i think I, we saw part something of that. they care about when the demo started uh or the gameplay part started uh it, in the corner it said zero of six eggs collected and i was like oh this is a fetch quest but then it turned into where are the eggs coming from and it kept looping and then finally it got to that spider enemy or whatever yeah. i thought okay so it is kind of branching as you're out so that gave me some hopefully hope. I, but... I have hope yeah, and I'm not sold because it was just presented in a way. I'm like, seriously, this is your big game. Yeah, and this is how you present it. Right. Ugh, okay. I just, you know, I know a lot of people put a lot of work into. I just felt like it. Like, I felt like it wasn't planned. A little way. bit. Uh, highlight for me was really okay. Um, what do you like? About one it? because the woman that came on stage, the developer, actually cared about what she was making. Mm-hmm real emotion and the game itself it looks cool and it's trying to tackle what i like about games these right is uh, a feeling and an emotion loneliness specifically and how loneliness affects us on a deep level Mm -hmm. so if that can be translated nicely into this metaphor alone on an ocean through a derelict town city with your loneliness turning you into a monster basically like there's a lot that can be done there that can, I would think, a lot of an emotional impact. Um, and like I said, the woman on stage seemed deeply believe in the story that she was telling and what she wanted to tell from it. So it's, I always appreciate that. <laughs> it's something I've been reflecting on in terms of the EA originals, because for both of us, our highlight was an EA original. Um, so it just makes me glad that they're doing that. And I know they're not getting any profit off it, um, which is it's just like this, you know, it's a nice thing, but a PR thing, whatever. Um, but you know if that wasn't there if those things weren't there it just would have been so corporate and so just rote you know safe i think you there's no yeah it's safe i mean there's nothing exceptionally exciting there you get your yep battlefield game coming out cool which it didn't show that much of i thought i thought they'd show more not a huge amount but it just like you what do you what are you gonna show it's a battlefield game like clearly they're not gonna be revising the core gameplay it's a first-person shooter with lots of players. They're, it's in World War II this time. What okay. I thought, what I thought they would show is they have this new Battle Royale mode coming that I thought they would show something about. But... <laughs> Maybe they'll cut it because by, by the time this comes out, Battle Royale. Um, Perhaps. Or just... Because you know... let's just be honest. Like the tr- I'm just like, this, this is a fad because the way that everyone's dogpiling on this makes me feel like it's a fad. Well, just, um, I think what it should become is just what it is, which is just a game mode. Like, you have free-for-all, you have deathmatch, you yeah. have battle royale. It's just a fucking game mode. Battle it's royale. not a whole game. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you have that. You have the sports games. Yeah. Yep. I those are coming. through all of those. You, you have an RPG, big RPG, because they always do one of those. Um, and then some stuff that's just tossed in a being like, here's updates and things we're bringing to our games that we're already doing. Yeah, the Star so, Wars one didn't uh, do anything for you? The general no. grievous or whatever i'm not i'm not gonna get battlefront 2 i don't care yeah um it's just i really i'm like i don't want to play an online shooter really for the yeah, most part right so it's gonna take a lot for me to play an online shooter and star wars is not enough just to go like oh look at star wars things you yeah. know um so yeah no it's very corporate it's very the whole thing and which means it's not the most it's not like terrible like oh my god this is horrible but it's not gonna be good it's just gonna be kind of stale which maybe is i bet is actually in some ways worse than just being bad i mean it just it felt tone deaf like the fans yeah wanted certain things you know you know at least on like the message boards or whatever a lot of people are calling for skate four um yep a couple other games i can't off the top of my head, I can't remember, remember, but like the bring these IPs. Burnout would be freaking awesome. Yeah, 
I want a burnout. Give me a new burnout game. Give me a burnout that is battle royale burnout. Battle royale. Hundred, hundred player race. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. I'm still waiting. It would be for... hilarious. It I'm would be so dumb. I still... It would be great. I still want to see the Battle Royale Breath of the Wild that you mentioned, like, I don't know, six months ago. Uh, <laughs> That's never going to happen. But um, no, no. I, I think that there was a lot of stuff that they could have brought forward for the fans, and it's just the same nope. old thing. Which Well, EA hasn't done that, so. I guess we should give it the ghost. They should They're I, the honestly... corporate. Sorry, go ahead. They're the most corporate of the corporate. Yeah, so. it's true. But they should; those are fucking blog posts. Is it just ego where they're like, we need to do this press conference? or pre- Pretty much. Oh, it's not even ego. It's just for like they have to. Because, yeah. again, if they didn't do this, their stock price would probably go down. They have to have presence. They have to just be like, we're here. We make a shit ton of money, even if it is kind of like whatever they, they really do. So I think there's just certain expectations that just have to be met PR visibility standpoint. Honestly, I think that you probably hit the nail on the head there. Like that they are compelled to do this for some reason. And it's just going through the motions and just God. Anyway. Yep. Let's Cause uh, Activision doesn't do it. Right. Thank God. They're like, no, we'll just put some stuff in pressers, but we'll not do our own man. I, w- I wish EA which might be the best way for EA to go. Mm-hmm. Honestly, they don't probably need their entire own thing. Right. I agree. So, yeah, we can go to Microsoft. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the next thing because uh, I think we'll be a little more positive about this, um, just in terms of uh, scope. Scope. I mean, yeah, Microsoft. They just showed a bunch of games. Yep. And Which, we're very, very loose with the term exclusive. You know, motherfuckers. Every I know what they're doing, but it, you know, on the screen it says like uh, console first exclusive or whatever terminology. But when they speak, it just says exclusive exclusive like it's not a fucking exclusive man <laughs> and no you know, and they would no they use very specific they're like oh there's 18 exclusives in here i'm like okay well it is a console launch exclusive yeah. that's not fucking exclusive mm-hmm. that's but whatever the, like one was console launch exclusive was for like PUBG's new map right. i'm like PUBG is not a freaking exclusive to you guys sorry <laughs> Well, and, the, and it's just, oh. it kept driving me nuts that it would say like console launch exclusive or whatever on the screen, and it would just say exclusive. Oh. So if, if, you know, I'm washing dishes and listening, and it says exclusive. I'm like, oh, okay, it's nope. That I know that's not an exclusive. Um, yeah, I always so look. That's at, that is a certain unfortunate part. I'm just like, guys, I get it. You want you want to make it seem like you have more actual exclusive things that you can only play on an Xbox, but you don't. It's okay. Like. I always going to work towards getting back to that point. I always treat this conference as the second Sony conference because I know most of those games are going to come to Sony or my PC, um, which is yeah. just nice. No, they like hold games it, they're play. like, here's 50 games. And I'm like, awesome. I'll be playing that on PS4. I'll be playing that on my PC. Yep. Like they, this is the unfortunate part. Like I like their conference from the fact that they showed a ton of games, a ton so of good many. games. It was really good. I, I don't care about their conference because it didn't sell me on getting an Xbox one. Well, this is the, all. this is the thing that I was really excited about this conference for because, like, the prices are coming down like either now or at ETH or at a Black Friday. Like, they'll be yep. in range of getting you know jumping back and getting my back catalog or whatever. And I wanted to see something that would sell me on the the, the box. <sighs> I didn't see it. You know, no, there's nothing. I wouldn't say there's anything here that's there's some good actual exclusive like Forza Horizon Four does look good. I'm just not going to buy a whole console for it, though. Well, and I can play on my PC. It's Windows 10. Oh, it is Windows 10, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, that, uh, of all the Microsoft exclusives, that's, you know, I love the, the Horizon games. Um, so yeah. I would like to play it, but I could just play on my PC. Aside, I really wanted to hit in that, in their demo of it as they're driving around the countryside. I really wanted them to hit a sheep. <laughs> Jesus. Because they... Yeah. They're driving through fields, and there's, like, sheep running around. And the first thing that popped in my mind was, like, did they program you hitting a sheep? Um, Probably But they not. didn't show me. <laughs> so I, I assume not, because I assume they don't want the blood and gore. The car manufacturers probably don't want their cars damaged <laughs> or being seen in that light and no. the whole thing. But either way, that, that is the first head. Um, so it, it's a failure because it didn't answer that question. So how did you feel about the very end of the conference? Very. Oh, right. <laughs> um, I thought the trailer was way too short. Yeah? Okay. Didn't show, didn't show me enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm excited. 
I actually am like, that's cool. I'm glad you're showing me actually what the game looks like now. It's Night City and it's all the stuff I know from the cyberpunk world there, the mm-hmm. corporations. But I would like more and I'm going to get more. Um, it's clear. Um, Jeff Keighley is interviewing them at 530 on Tuesday and we'll have a lot more info on cyberpunk. Awesome. And then they have that hidden image at the end. That have you was seen that thing yeah, on, yeah. online. Uh huh. I read it. I read the entire thing and I'm like, OK, I trust you guys. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I do think it's weird that Microsoft ended with that, though. Like, why did they why did they open with Halo like their own big IP that you will get to play? Well, I guess you get to play it on PC this time. But barring that with that, I don't know. I feel like there's in the zeitgeist right now so much enthusiasm and hype for cyberpunk that maybe i understand but it just seemed an odd like you're ending with this world premiere that is not exclusive at all just everywhere it's like you have no control over this thing right most companies would end with the thing that they actually like own or control that's why i thought that the um gears five a weird choice to me i like it so I thought the Gears 5 Halo was like the natural bookends for the conference. I still liked uh, it. It almost felt like an yeah. epilogue, which still, you know, that's where they're ending it at. Um, just really quickly, the, the text that you were talking about, just I have it in front of me here, just was basically talking about, the, you know, they're not ready to reveal the release date yet, but hopefully soon they're further along than they thought they'd be. No uh, microtransactions, uh, super big, um, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then uh, part of the, when it was flashing for a moment, I was like, were those, were those game codes? Were they? Yeah, 25 game codes for Witcher 3 Complete Edition. I, f- I figured it was Witcher 3. I was pretty sure. On which, on Steam or good old games? Or Xbox? No, I think they're Xbox codes. Because they were... Um, Xbox codes? Okay. Yeah, they were... I think they were. Because they were the 25 it, it's uh, just, digit. It, I, I assumed it was for the Microsoft thing. And I was like, oh, it's probably the Microsoft one. But I was like, it could also be good old games. Because CD Projekt owns good old games. Yeah. So Yeah, I thought they were Xbox. Uh, um, I thought people on the Xbox forum talking about redeeming it on their Xboxes. So I think they were Xbox. Oh, I'm sure. I, I saw it. I was like, I'm pretty sure those are game codes yeah. for something. Um, yep. I'd assume that it was right. good. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, thing, uh, th- something that stood out to me just because... Um, I was thinking, finally, they've been teasing it long enough. Uh, Battle Toads 2019. Not, not the biggest game <laughs> in the world, but, uh, you know, there was a logo. <laughs> yeah. With some funny text, and that was uh, that was interesting. I guess, That's about it. That's all you're getting right now. I guess Rare is working on that, perhaps. Um, but, I mean, really, out of that, like, while well, they showed a bunch of games, is there anything there that was like, man, I, I really... I'm just going through the list that I've... There was from Software's announcement, right? With uh, Sek- Sek- uh, Sekiro, mm-hmm. um, Samurai Dark. Um, that's not Neo. Yeah, honestly, I thought it was Neo at first. I'm like, is this? I so did I. I thought it was like, is this Neo too? <laughs> I think they had shown the uh, From Software logo first, so I knew it wasn't. But I was thinking, what's happening here? Yeah. So not Bloodborne too. Yeah, the Fallout stuff. Uh, this is a weird one. So they showed Crackdown at the beginning. Crackdown three near the beginning. Mm-hmm. Cool, big open world. Like had Terry Crews yelling Terry Crews do its thing. Awesome, it's like yeah. there's always a win. Yep. But you just watch that, and it's a big destroy things game. And then towards the end of the the show, they did Just Cause Four, which I'll be honest, Just Cause Four does the open world, just do random stuff to make explosions far better than Crackdown ever did. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of this weird. I'm like, okay, you opened with your own thing, and then. I mean, it was right before the gear stuff, Just Cause 4 being like, but wait, here's this multi-platform game. So you feel like they're basically eclipsing themselves in their own conference. Kind of. That one felt very eclipsing. I'm like, okay. It made me feel like they don't have a lot of faith in the Crackdown franchise. Well, I mean, they keep delaying this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Well, now everything's coming 2019. Dude, goddamn. February 22nd, Anthem and Days Gone. Yep. uh, Nearby crackdown and uh crackdown kingdom hearts 3 is the end of january, january yeah. um there was something else the time frame as well there was it's crowded it's really crowded so that's I, gonna be i can't imagine something's got a delay just seemed like yeah. they're all in the same spot i like the um i was surprised that the xbox stage got the frozen uh reveal because uh 
Kingdom yeah. Hearts fans have been clamoring yeah. and just have known that it's coming, and Xbox got to reveal it. They got the reveal. Well, pl- this makes sense, though, because if Sony is not showing a lot of games, mm-hmm. if they've said, like, you know, we're going to focus on a few games, all these reveals go to the page. Right. Um, which I guess is fine. I mean, but that's the thing. As me as a person, I'm like, that's great. I get to watch this press conference from Microsoft and see all these games that I'm going to buy systems. That's why I think I think Sony's smart enough to know that's what's happening, obviously, because they're, they're winning the quote unquote yeah. uh, console race in terms of how many units are sold. Um, you know, and the chatter the last couple of years, like I'm watching this conference to know what I'm going to play on PlayStation. It, they know that's happening. They don't need to give tons of space yeah. to that because they know people are going to buy on, you know, people are going to buy Kingdom Hearts 3 on PS4 because that's where the other Kingdom Hearts games are. Yeah. And I've never, I've never played yeah, Kingdom Hearts. I, I have the first two, uh, which I want to get to eventually. But I got to tell you, that trailer sold me on that game. Like that fucking Incomprehensible rad. story. Is it really? Incompreh- <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, <laughs> it's the most bizarre, weird Japanese story. God, it's so strange and so dense. Um, I, I mean, I played the first two. Okay. And by any of the stuff I see now, I'm like, I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> like, none. I have no way understanding of how things all connect together. Um, so... Uh, it was cool looking though. Um, yeah, it looked cool. It, it my wife saw it and she was sure. like, "I still brought my wife in." I was like, "Come in, come in. You gotta watch it." Because I also have just PS2, uh, the first game in Japanese. Her copy. She mm-hmm. loves those games. Um, at least the first two. She played the first two as yeah. well. Um, no, it, it intrigued me. It looked cool. I, mean, I I was intrigued yeah. by that. I was intrigued by the Gears Five. Uh, actually, really a lot more intrigued by Gears Tactics, uh, to be honest. I'm I, I want to see more. Like yeah. it is intriguing. Um, they said like we'll show more later. I'm like when. Right. Like, um, when's the next, uh, I guess, Gamescom? End of summer-ish time? Yeah, probably. That's I mean, August that, that, is Gamescom, I think. Yeah, that, I... If it's anytime soon, if it later is sometime next year, this game's not coming out for a while, so... Yeah, yeah I just felt like um, it was more Microsoft coming out and saying, yes, we have these first-party games coming eventually. Yeah, and that brings to the point where they announced acquisitions. <laughs> so... Undead Labs, Ninja Theory, Compulsion Games, and Playground Games. And there was one more because there were five. So, I can't remember the fourth. Oh, one. and the, they opened a new studio. Oh, the initiative, the initiative. yeah, in, uh, Santa Monica. So that's a new studio that they opened Correct. in Santa Monica, where I'm going to be tomorrow. Uh, right. Um, and then, but then buying these four studios, which is great. They needed to do this. But it's going to be years before they this really starts paying dividends for them. Yeah, see, it feels like they're laying groundwork for Xbox Five or for whatever. Whatever they call it now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know because they don't use any kind of real terminology for their name. So right, but at it least can they, be anything they want. But he mentioned it. Yeah, you're right. But he mentioned like they're we're you know, working on the next generation. They're working of whatever, on the next thing. Yeah, which we all know. We anyway. know Sony's working on the next thing, but yeah, 2020, yeah 2021 is the first. Uh, Sony has been clear. They said that it was at least three years right. before a launch. Well, so. if they make all their money off the software, I mean, now that all those consoles are out there and the prices are declining on the consoles, they're going to make money off the software. So just yeah. milk, milk that, you know, just like Nintendo's doing with the 3DS. Like, just keep putting yeah. shit out there because people will buy it. Yeah. Um, I was most surprised by Ninja because Hellblade, I associate that with PS4 for some reason, probably because it was there first. Um, but, yeah. Good. I associate because Ninja Theory before Hellblade they did Heaven Sword mm-hmm. was one of their first ones. Like they've done stuff that I've seen in consoles. Oh, okay. So they've gone back and forth on doing PS3 stuff and 360 stuff. And mm-hmm. So it's, it wasn't surprising. That wasn't surprising. In some ways, it's surprising is mm-hmm. I expected a bigger acquisition. Honestly, like because a... now. I don't know even know anymore. They we were talking about them buying EA or like or Bioware, Day, or whatever, like yeah, mm-hmm. something big, right? Because even with this, they now have they had it on the screen. They have eleven internal studios now. That seems good. Sony has twenty six, maybe more. Nintendo has I don't even know how many teams. So I can't even figure out how Nintendo classifies their teams <laughs> yeah. honestly because I'm like they're kind of a lot of first party, but not like it's very confusing. Um, even the ones that are like clearly Game not Freak, the Pokemon yeah, stuff. I'm exactly. like, are you first party devs or I don't think you are, but in interviews, they're very clear. No, we're not. We are second party where we do our own thing. They make, you know, they made like 
uh, the badass Tumbo, the badass elephant, or whatever the hell it's called. Like they make games yeah. that are not Pokemon, that they are not with Nintendo. So they are their own thing. But Thanks. we all, we conflate them with Nintendo all the time. Yeah. So I can't do Nintendo. I'm like, okay, you have now have eleven internal. Okay, it's still going to be a while before you actually can churn out consistently every year games, ex- right. good exclusive games. Well, it's taken Sony a while, right? Like we're just yeah. now hitting like the golden age of whatever they've been yeah. working on for the last five, six, seven years. So it's you know lucky us having PS4s. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that at the Xbox conference, it was the second game announced. I think it was the second game, um, Ori Two, Will oh, yeah. Wisps. That looked fucking awesome. It looked so it looks good. I can play on my PC, but it looked rad. And that's where they're, I was like, they're like exclusive. I'm like, no, it's not. I'll get, the, I could buy this on Steam. I'm pretty sure when yeah. it comes out. Um, I'm like, you should make it exclusive. I'm just they a won't. sucker so, for beautiful. Uh, oh, it's beautiful Metroidvania platform. Thingy. Mm-hmm. Did you Absolutely ever touch? Gorgeous. You ever touch the first no. one? Yeah. No. Okay. I got a little turned off whenever I had some really good friends play it, and they're like, it's really hard. Yeah. So. That made me go like I don't want really want a hard game right now, yeah. so I won't. Um, overall, I really I thought their conference was fine. It was exciting to see. Um, I, that's I I thought it was good just for just hit just uh, it, foot it's on the just gas. I'm sitting sitting now, I'm just like okay. You showed me a bunch of games. Is that is that really good for Microsoft though as a company? The message they kept putting out was that we're further the... position. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that the message they kept coming out with is like, it's the best place to play, best place to play, best place to play. And like, is that that's the only plank of this platform? Yeah, which is, is that like, it, it's just kind of one of those. I'm like, I like you're showing me all the stuff. Hopefully in the next few years, you'll have more compelling stuff of why your brand is necessary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, overall, I was just happy to see a bunch, a bunch of games. It, yeah, just a, a nonstop uh, foot on the gas. And it, just go, go, and go. And it worked well. And it did. It was. That was a good. I thought it was a really good. For the conference. most part, they were just like, "Don't have people talk. It's cool." Yep. Uh, even Phil Spencer isn't the best talker up there. No, he fumbled. Like he, he fumbled, was... and he's very slow and stilted. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a very natural. You can tell it's not the most natural thing for him. Um, I thought it was bad when he. You know, for the most part, I thought he was fine. But there was a part where he was talking about how much they love their community or whatever, and he stumbled on saying that. I was like, dude, you gotta like say that from your yeah. heart. You can't just fuck that up on a cue yeah. card or whatever. Yeah. But overall, I thought it was good. So that ended. With if, Cyberpunk. If, if you're comparing it to EA, mm, it was great. But it was good. It was um, great. And then landing with you know, anyway, Cyberpunk was exciting just because I wanted to see what the f that game was, and because uh, I don't know shit about Cyberpunk, and it looked intriguing to me. So they have a character create. I was like, oh, please don't. <laughs> and that little text at the end makes it clear you have a character creator. Yeah. So exactly. and somewhere I was going through the trailer. I did more like watch it. I've watched it like three times now, four times. Mm-hmm. But I was pausing through it. And there's definitely a point in the trailer where you're following a female protagonist who is wearing a very similar clothing to the male protagonist. So it's, I am thinking the story is going to be presented in like a shepherd kind of way. Like you can be any gender you want. It look any way you want, make but your it will be the, the same story. Yeah. Yeah, basically, make your own Geralt. What if I could make Geralt? <laughs> I bet you <laughs> or could. Or Siri. I mean, I've seen people make Geralt in other games. Yeah. Like, I've seen an exact thing of, like, how to change your sliders in Monster Hunter World to get Geralt. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. Well, it's the same um, thing with... So, that's the thing. <laughs> same thing with uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, where there are tutorials how to make Jamie Lannister and Cersei Lannister and... You know, all the Game of Thrones yeah. characters, basically, which is rad. Yep. Um, yeah, so last one tonight was, well, not the last one, but the last one that we saw, or parts of at least, Bethesda came out, and you yep. saw all of it? The whole of thing, it? most okay. of the whole thing. So how about you run us through? Because I only saw the uh, last It was brilted and bad at the beginning, um, where they went through Rage 2, God, why are we getting up? So unnecessary. Like, I didn't think the first game did well enough to deserve a sequel, but here we are. Getting another post-apocalyptic shooter. Can I say that post-apocalyptic games are the in thing right now? They God, seem to be. <laughs> everything is a post-apocalypse of something or another. Um, I feel like that has something to say about society where we feel like we're in the apocalypse or something. Maybe. I don't know. Probably. But God. I'm, I'm, 
I'm gonna get post-apocalyptic burnout, pretty sure. Um, but it's not pink. the game burnout, but actually, like, uh, yes, this is pink, <laughs> and the people have mo- colored mohawks. Oh god, um, and it's trying to do whatever f- silly, funny attitude. It's Avalanche doing it. It looks pretty, could be fun, but it didn't do a whole lot for me. And they had some like rock and roll band play before they announced it. I don't know. Hmm. Such bizarre conference. I came into this band just play was this. Um, and then they went to Elder Scrolls Legend, and they basically announced that they're going to be revamping the visual. Huh. Okay. Is, it, is it floundering, that card game? I just, I don't think, I don't know. No like, one's going to dethrone Hearthstone. I don't Hearthstone. think it, yeah, uh, it's going to be. No, Hearthstone will lose them. They will, Blizzard will do something themselves. Like, right. no one's coming in taking it from them right now. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. That kind of went over with kind of a meh like you could see that like most people in the audience like every sixth person was clapping it was pretty sad um mm. then they showed a new doom which got people somewhat excited um uh, doom Infinity? eternal oh eternal that's it yeah um which is doom okay like <laughs> shoot demons not i would say they just went through kind of the motions at the beginning here mm-hmm. uh wolfenstein young blood that was cool which is the next one, and you'll play daughters of BJ, twin daughters, and set in 1980s. Wow, okay. There you go back and find uh, that trailer. That's cool. It's very, you don't know a whole lot. It's just very weird thing. I assume it's going to be a while before that one's out. Is it uh, DLC for um, Wolfenstein 2, or is it? No, no, it's a whole new game. Oh, okay. So I assume that won't be until sometime 2019 at earliest. Mm-hmm. Um, then they did the best part. Oh, their transition point, I would say. So Todd Howard came out, and there's a person who actually like, seems to care about the things that he's actually talking about, has charisma, and talks very naturally while on stage. Just feels like he's having a conversation with the audience. Um, just noticeably whenever you're like, oh, here's a good speaker. Um, and they transitioned with Skyrim, very special edition. Which you need to find this thing and watch it. Hilarious. Is it a fucking and joke? <laughs> it is a joke. Okay. Because that's the whole damn. thing. Todd Howard came out and he started making fun of himself. <laughs> We're going to put Skyrim um, on a fucking toaster. Uh, it, it opens with... Uh, 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 God, who is it? Um, Keegan Michael, Michael Peel? Yeah. Of Keegan Peel. Um, uh, whatever. God, I can face on his name. But either way, he's out there and it's like him playing it through alexa it's like we bought skyrim to alexa oh uh, my and then God. on to like refrigerators onto pagers <laughs> uh it just is hilarious oh, absolutely that's awesome hilarious. Uh, joke thing and then it drops into todd howard just talking he's like and here's fallout 76 with a lot more info on fallout 76 which it is everything that's been uh small scale multiplayer building survival game is there a story to it? There is. It says you can play just play it single player for an entire story. Nice. Okay. So, so I mean, it's a it's going to be a mixture of those genres put like smashed together. Mm-hmm. There's no vats. Mm-hmm. They showed combat. Like I mean, it's just a shooter at that point because it's multiplayer. You can't slow things down. Yeah, um, that makes sense. In multiplayer, so is uh, it your out? character progression will not to like you will never see a server. It's a lot like Destiny or anything like that. You won't see a server list you're picking. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just in this world. Right. Um, your character progression will just be your character progression through wherever you're playing. Um, and then at the end, they announced it's coming out this year. November 14th. So it is coming out just before yep. Black Friday, basically. Okay. Yep. Did they November say... November 14th, this it, year. Is it a... It's not a free-play game, I'm, I'm sure. It's... Did they say a price point? Or do you think it's a $60 game? No, uh, I'm sure it's sixty dollars, and they announced some huge special edition that I really want. And there's going to be a beta as well. Is it the one with the um, helmet? Yeah. Oh man, that's going to be expensive. I have my Pit Boy. I need. I need my. Uh, um, my Fallout seventy six special edition. We'll man, see. There goes your gaming. It budget. wasn't up on Amazon this or this. Uh, mm-hmm. There it is. Excellent. Deluxe edition for collectors at two hundred dollars. Oh. That's less than I thought it was going to be. And there's... Is it already sold out? I'll have to wait. I'll have to probably pounce on that one later, maybe. Yeah. So you're... But yeah. You're going to play that game. You're intrigued by it. I think I will. I mean, it, I'll play it if there's a good group of play it with. Mm-hmm. 
I think it might be like any of those games. I think it'd be a lot of fun with friends. And if if you enjoy Fallout story wise, you might enjoy the single player. But I have a feeling it'll be as if it's just random groups, I wouldn't have nearly as much fun. Right. Um. So that was cool. Pretty pretty excited about that. Um, then they went on to um, uh, Vault uh, Fallout Shelter, and that's coming to Switch and PS4. So well, I guess that makes sense. That's a thing. Um, nope. cause they went into a little bit of mobile stuff. So they went to that and then they went into that. They're doing a elder scrolls for mobile. Uh, is that the blades thing people were bitching about? Yeah. <laughs> are people bitching about it? Uh, from what I, before I came here, I got, hopped on the Reddit to see what people were talking about with Bethesda. So I could just get a sense of what people were talking about. And everyone I saw was bitching about this blades thing. So Why? I have no idea. I don't know what it is about. I don't know why they would bitch about it, because to me, I'm like, is this my dream of an actual deep RPG on the phone? Because I'd be really excited about that, and it could be. Uh, That's probably why they're bitching about it, because it's on the phone, I guess. That's fine. Like, maybe when they're bitching about it, they hadn't got through the next few So they did the the phone phone Mm -hmm. thing at first, and they're like, hey, there's this thing where we're doing Elder Scrolls Blades, and it's a mobile thing. You can play it portrait. You can play it landscape. It will have like like three game modes. Your town, ta- like town mode, where you your town it's all in first person, um, making choices about the town you're building. You can visit your friends' towns. You use that as a hub to go on arena mode, where you can fight other people. And then there's a dungeon mode where it's just a roguelike with your character. I'm all like all mobile, all hmm. mobile hmm. and free. It's free to play the whole thing. So I'm like, you know what, like. Is this the Elder Scrolls that I really love and want? No, not really. But if can I get the amount I've wanted some form of like deeper RPG on the phone mm-hmm. that I can play on the go? Mm-hmm. I've been wanting that for a long time. And not just these like uh, grindy battle games. An actual like I can explore things. Uh, so that made me excited. Cool. Todd Howard still comes back out and he's like, oh, so I know what you want to hear. But the next game that we hear, the next game we're going to put out is actually a new IP. And that's going to be the first next... one we've done in 25 years. And it's going to be the next game they release, he says? Yeah, next like major single player game that they I release. See. Got it, got it. Which, so it's not going to be Fallout. It's not Elder Scrolls. It's this thing called Starfield. And it's just a quick little teaser. And a... it's Bethesda does space opera, right. as far as I can tell. Sold. I'm done. Well, and the rumors that I've heard is that it's set in the Fallout universe, even though it's not somehow connected. Really? Yeah, the the Kotaku had some stuff on it, which they've been right on so far. Um, that okay. It's, you know, they said it was Starfield. That is, you know, exactly what you said, Bethesda in space, but that it's somehow connected to the Fallout universe, and I'm not sure how. So, okay, sure. But next thing, and then he's still like, no, one more thing here, hmm. and then they show a, a very teaser announcement that yeah, we're working on six. Right. Because everyone knew they were working. like that game's not coming out it's very far. It's going to be a while. It's yeah. going to be very far away. Yeah. Like, but they they just it was a weird way. I'm like, well, why I feel like this been on a high note. They were like, we know what you want here. We are making it. It's just going to take us. We're doing a lot of other things too. So it always intrigues me that that's enough for some of the fans because this is the part that I caught and it was just like two splash screens basically. And like, yep. Okay. Well, they're working on it, but that's, and that's all that people like, sometimes that's the fandom and stuff. All they really need is that reassurance that the company cares about that property. Yeah. Uh, same thing that happened with Metroid prime four last year, right? Where people are like, yeah. Oh fuck. Thank God. You guys actually know how to say Metroid. Yeah. It, it's not like, and that's sometimes all you need to do. You don't need these like, Oh, it's going to come out. Like I'm, it's great that I love Bethesda and they're like, guess what? Here's a game that you didn't think would be coming out this year. It's coming out this year. Um, I appreciate them on how quick they've gotten on that stuff. But the beginning of this was their conference conference was very slow. Todd Howard came out and it became much better. Good. I'll have to go it watch. Just, from... It was just a thing after thing of like, let's just show you stuff. Let me just talk. Let me joke about Bethesda as a company, um, make fun of ourselves I will say they opened, that's one thing. The first thing that they showed here was not a game. They showed a video that showed people that make the games. That's kind of like what they did last year with the kids of the developers, right? Wasn't that Yeah, them? and this was just, 
I uh, might have been. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. But they just showed like, here, here's a behind the scenes, our offices and the people that make it. See how diverse we are. Like, we want to like make games that reflect us, the developers. Mm-hmm. And the developers are made up of all races, all religions, all genders. Like, so they're like, yeah, this is this is who we are and how we want to make games. So, kind of an answer to them. Don't push back against us wanting to make things that we want to make, um, including diverse options because we are diverse. Right. So enjoy. Well, it was also nice to see the you know the larger teams behind um, yeah. the games and the uh, the human element. I know that we yeah. see some of them on stage, but they're so stilted and like scared out of their fucking minds that it's just it's not quite. And really, human-like. that's such a small fraction of the people that actually. Yeah. Right. make these games yep uh i will tell you brad just started watching the uh bethesda conference and he texted me and said hey they started off with andrew wk nice so apparently he's into that band that you were like who the fuck i is had this? no clue who the hell that was <laughs> and they weren't bad it was just i was like why am i watching a rock and roll band i was, I was bethesda announcing a like music game <laughs> i don't know what's going on yeah um so yeah um so there's an audience for that I guess so. I just didn't know who those people were. I am not up on new music. So, um, but overall, I liked overall liked their conference. And I said it felt like it got better as it went. It was weird. It was in the round. Oh, yeah, that was weird. Where he... Oh, my God. That was really strange because some of the developers. So Todd Howard walked back and forth, like pretty much in a circle, mm-hmm. but showing his face to everyone. Yep. So many developers just standed looking like one direction. I'm like, good. Half the audience is only looking at your ass. <laughs> uh, that's one and that the... just was, that was one of my heckles into our discord channel. It was just like, once I realized it was in the round, I was like, Oh my God. One of my favorite things to do is watch theater in the round and just yeah. see how the actors deal with space and, and look at everyone and, or, you know, face everyone at least. Um, I saw Death of a Salesman in the round, and it was really fucking good. I think I saw... What have I seen in the round? I saw some Shakespeare Festival stuff in the round. Yeah. Um, it was fantastic. There was but a... again, anything that like actors that are prepared for it, you can do a great with that. Well, in the if way you're not they... prepared for it, you give half the audience your ass. Well, in the way you block scenes and stuff, where if one scene is facing one way, you do yeah. it and different with the next scene or whatever. So did they have developers go on one side and then the other, or just they were always on one side? I don't... It was hard to tell from the video. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Um, I wasn't looking... Cl- there were definitely some that just did not turn around or do anything. They were just standing there, and I'm like, God damn it. So let's, let's end this be on a be- positive... Be better at this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's end this on a positive note. Let's talk about... Uh, give me one thing from so far that was your favorite. And then give me one thing you're really looking forward to for the next couple of days. Not related to your game, of course. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> honest, I, I will still put up Cyberpunk. It's okay. my favorite by mm-hmm. far. Okay. Like, even though that was short, it, it is now watching through it many times. Is given. I'm in. Give me this now, but it will still probably be 2020 before it comes out. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. cry, but... <laughs> yeah, but you're probably I think right. It, I, I, someone on Reddit made the point. They're like... If they waited until July 7th, uh, 20, uh, 2020, it would be 27-7, your uh, non-U.S. date. Right. Or not U.S., but they could. I'm like, you're right. They could just wait to that just so that the date matches up. Um, yeah, because And the months. original game it's based on is based on Cyberpunk 2020. Yeah. So uh, there's part of me that's like, yeah, you're just going to hold it, even if you... You'll just polish it and you'll release it in 2020 just as a, a great joke. Um, not like they're hurting on money. So No, and yeah, the development um, that, there is cheaper, of course. Yeah, so um, that was still probably... I was excited. I liked how it was the like fake hacking thing, and um, I appreciated that. For the next couple of days, what I'm really excited for, um, I'm actually really... I'm not excited. What I want to know is I want a lot more of the stuff... I want these hands-on impressions more. Yeah. Well, and the the people um, on Twitter are talking you about... Can't get, I can't get so much of it through these videos. I'm like, some of this, like Anthem, is playable. I'm like, I don't honestly care as much about the video as I care about people actually playing the game and saying, how does this feel? Well, and all the hot takes from people who've been playing Anthem behind closed doors, just like, I wish they would have done this on stage because it's fucking incredible. And what was on stage was not. So that's really good to hear. Yeah. 
Um, so that's what I'm excited for. We'll see if I get to play anything. Yeah, I hope you do. Um, when I'm around. I don't know. I'm not going to... I'm personally not going to wait in any lines, uh, yeah. long lines to play anything, but um, we'll see if I can get into For me, Unravel, too. Just that nice surprise of it being available yep. now. And I'm, I'm playing it already. Um, and then coming up, probably Smash Brothers. I'm the most excited about yeah. seeing that reveal. Because we know... Uh, you know, we know stuff about it considering it might be some sort of port or some mix of new, old and new. So Wii yeah. U, Smash, I'm sure they're going to build on that. But I want to see the new characters. I want to see when it's coming out, yada, yada. So I'm most excited about that. Yeah. Nintendo's Tuesday, right? Nintendo is Tuesday. They're 9 right. o'clock in the morning, I think. God, I'm not going to even be live to watch that. I'm going to be <laughs> probably having breakfast and on the train and into downtown at that point. Yeah. Um. Sony is tomorrow, so yeah. I'll see that. Yeah, so quite a bit. Uh, there is a lot. Um, uh, Square is the wild card for me. Like, are they going to announce crazy shit? I guess we'll see. I don't know. Give me. It's a... hard to say. I'm like, I really don't know what they'll announce. Like, they could go crazy, but I mean, I'm sure they'll have a Kingdom Hearts three trailer, mm-hmm. their own trailer. Mm-hmm. Um they'll probably have a final fantasy seven remake thing there. Cause it would be really weird for them not to show anything mm-hmm. like that would make people really skeptical on that whole thing. They'll, they'll do shadow of the tomb Raider, probably similar to the trailer that they showed, if not the same trailer they showed at Microsoft. Yeah. I'm hoping that they do uh, games that they didn't show at other places, but I guess it makes sense for them to repeat. So they'll repeat. I'm pretty sure. Like if they not did all, kingdom, Hunts... I could see some, if they did Kingdom Hearts 3 again, I, I would hope or assume it would be a different world or something. I don't know. They could. I mean, they have a lot they could show there. Yeah. Um, will they show more stuff for Final Fantasy? F- oh, my God. The game like, never ends. <laughs> it does never end. So that's actually make me wonder. I'm like, is it? do they keep showing more for it? Is there more that they want to put into it? Um, I'm just thinking of the main Square brands. I'm just hoping to see... Uh, you know, recently... Uh, of the studio that did Bravely Default inside of Square. Um, that's the studio that's doing Octopath. Yeah, yeah. As well. I just can't remember their name, but they said recently. I think it was in a Game uh, Informer. I don't know their name. It was a something. Uh, in Game Informer, they said we are now we make Switch games. That's what our mission yeah. is. Yeah. Which okay. is pretty rad because if, if Octopath Traveler comes out and is good, you know, it's kind of like what they wanted to do with Tokyo RPG Factory, but those games didn't do so well. But yeah. Octopath looks like, from all accounts, uh, to be the one. I hope so. That studio studio has done great with the Bravely Default stuff. Mm-hmm. So I have high hopes they doing when it comes to classic updating classic art part. Well, like in the, the interview, mechanics and systems to be harken back to what we remember and are nostalgic for, but designed from a modern standpoint. Well, and that's uh, the the video I sent you yesterday about uh, the characters from Octopath Traveler the, yeah. and the new Game Informer. Um, that interview in there, it's a, there's a whole piece on with the game director or someone, and he said basically that. He's like, we wanted to bring forward the aesthetic and the feel of these 16-bit games, but without a lot of the, the trappings that were just cumbersome. Um, that like, update yeah. it for a modern gameplay um, perspective, and that's... And I would say that's really hard to actually do. It sounds like easy. It. You're like, just do it. And I'm like, it's actually not, because there's such a gray area. I'm like what that cruft from the 16-bit area is and what you should keep to make it still feel that way. Um, it Anytime you update, it's actually not as simple as like, oh, yeah, just change this. It's all a house of cards. Yeah, that makes sense. And I feel like some people like the inconveniences of those games. Like there are some... Um, yeah. Uh, the new game I'm playing, Battle Chasers. Uh, people were. Oh yeah, yeah. Some people were upset that in the late game you really have to grind a lot to get to the higher levels in order to, to face the later bosses. And some people were like, "That's what this is about." I'm excited about this long grind. So I don't know. There's lots of different sensibilities, I guess. Yeah. Um, you want to go really quickly with uh, Chrono Trigger and what we've been playing, or do you want to hold off on that? Um, we can. I'll just do very quickly. I mean, Chrono Trigger. I did a couple of the side quests, mm-hmm. and I'm in Black Omen now. You're still, like, still working your I way haven't played there. any more since we talked. Okay, cool. Like, I haven't got a chance to. I'll play this next week. I probably will beat the game. Yeah. Um, I love the side quests, though. They're, they're typically they're awesome. not that long, but mm-hmm. they're so good for the characters. Yep. God, I love them. And the side characters. It just brings such 
it just brings more depth to each of the each of your party members. Yeah, um, I, I enjoy them because it's fleshed out the story, fleshed out the characters. It's it's my favorite part of the game, and it's a part you could totally skip, uh, which mm-hmm. is interesting. I, the, the side quest I did was um, uh, Lucas, Lu- Lucha, Lucas. Yeah. Um, Lucas. Basically, where Luca. she you leave. Uh, Robo, he does the you know build the forest or whatever, and you go forward in time, and she goes back to save her mom basically uh, from the yep. machine. I, I really enjoyed that storyline, and that's the it, only I one mean, I did this week. It's simple, it's powerful, like they're great little moments for each of the characters. And one thing we haven't actually talked about that is kind of crazy is now in the game, since Chrono uh, died and you got him back, you don't have to have Chrono in your party. Yeah, right. And most of the time I don't. You can have any three characters you want in your party now. Right. Um, and that's a pretty big change how most RP You just typically always have the main character. Well, it's always a um, high fantasy thing where, like, this is the hero. Yeah. You play as the hero. And you did play as the hero for a portion of the game. Until you killed him. And then he died. <laughs> yeah. And no. now it doesn't matter. Now everyone's the hero. That's Everyone just, has it, their own important story. Right. And that's why it feels like it's opened up because it you're right. Not only do they not lock you into playing as the hero, but they let you explore the side stories from all the other characters and they can be the hero for a little bit of those stories. And it just, yeah, it's so much more interesting uh, yeah. than the beginning. Um, it's really a tale of two games almost. Yeah. Um, but, and Black Omen is huge. Um, yeah. God, that third save point, I think I'm, is the last save end of it. Okay. So I just, it, it, it's making it seem like the boss fight of Black Omen and it's going to be long and yeah. painful. So, well, the, um, I think we both have on our calendars to beat it this next week. I've got a five-hour train ride to and from L.A. on yep. Wednesday, so I'll definitely, hopefully, finish the side quest and get through Black Omen, at least, on, on that train ride, if not Lavos. Mm-hmm. And then Lavos before we talk next week. Yep, um, that's my plan as well. Yeah, cool. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the week, I spent a little time playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, every motherfucking time I find a dino in the wild and go to attack him, all of a sudden six of his friends come over and start attacking me too, and then like three birds come in, and it's just like all of a sudden this freaking robot uh, dinosaur orgy. Uh, so I kicked the difficulty down to easy because I was just getting my ass kicked. And I was like, all right, I'll just go down to easy. It didn't change much. Like it, I was able to survive the fights because um, the hit points were less, obviously, but it was just getting sworn by so many that I, you know, I realized it's trying to teach me how to like play the game, like set the traps and look for their weaknesses and like really scope out the area. Um, yep. It's not a game you can rush through. Um, no. But I, I did no. knock it down to easy because I'm like, I just want to fucking get through this game. <laughs> so, um, but I'm really enjoying my time with it. It's just stunning on a full PS4 Pro in 4K. It is absolutely yes, stunning. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that's oh, and then uh, Yarny uh, uh, Unravel yeah. Two played the first two levels. It's gorgeous. The basically it's co-op now where you have two yarn dudes traversing the level, and if you're playing by yourself, it's almost like a tale of two brothers. You just control both of them at the same time, switching back and forth between the two. Lots of puzzles. Beautiful. Uh, I really think that the design of the, the levels are better than the first game. Uh, the traversal is better than the first game, and the fact that you have to like n- navigate with uh, both your characters is just makes every traversal point almost like a puzzle like trying to figure out how the nice. best way to go across in a way that's engaging and not tedious so far i'm only two levels in this could be i was thinking about today uh if it does not outstay its welcome it'll be one of my favorite games of the year if it uh outstays its welcome it will be not very good because it, it yeah if it was compact it's going to be great if it's just stays too long and just too tedious. It could be really bad. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with it right now. I'm not sure the final verdict, but so far loving it. Um, oh, and this week I should say I played, I played Labo today. Oh shit. Yeah, that's right. Son gave him his present today. Cause his birthday is, he had a party yesterday and his actual birthday is tomorrow, but he has school tomorrow and I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. But we've decided we're like, let's give him Labo on Sunday, where like the day in the morning, and he can have the day to play with this thing. Um, and I got to play with it. It's really fun. Is it? It is awesome. Ridiculously like it's simple, but it's it's just the variety pack. So what did we built the RC car to drive around, which has way more features than I would expect. It has like a infrared thing. It uses the camera mm-hmm. on one of the Joy Cons, and it actually displays what the Joy Con is seeing. Whoa! Okay. And and it's like a monochrome gray screen, but I mean you can it can see people, and there's all sorts of we do. Um, yeah, that was a weird one, and we made the motorcycle. Oh yeah, the handlebars and or whatever. The handlebars and the motor- 
my son loves it. It's perfect for his age. At he's just turned eight, so uh, it's the right difficulty for him um, for building and playing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, and it's just it's polished beyond belief. Um, the whole teaching how to build things, the like instructions, and how it's all on the switch, and you're going back and forth, and it shows you in animation how everything moves, and how you're supposed to bend the cardboard, and um, feedback is fantastic. Like I'm just super impressed by it um do you think i should expect this be out of nintendo like yeah. nintendo polish the crap out of this thing do you think that most of the fun is in putting it together or do you think there's still a lot of fun in using the thing i think a lot of it is putting it together mm-hmm. but from what i've seen the actual like end of it isn't a letdown like it's fun to put it together and then the, the game you play pretty entertaining awesome um shows the novelty of it like yeah it was it was a it was cool um He's already talking about if he can, ha- if he'll have time to build some of the stuff tomorrow, because it gets long like that. I think the motorbike, like the motorcycle, took him like two hours to build. Yeah, hour and a half, to two hours. Yeah, so, I heard the piano is, is really long. <laughs> the piano, because they, they give times under each of the builds. Oh, okay. Like how long to, the piano is really long. It's the longest. Yeah. Um, and the house, for whatever reason, is the second longest. Hmm. So I'm really interested to know what is so special about this house that makes it so long to build. So we'll see. Awesome. Uh, I'll see what he has built when I get back uh, later in the week. Well, happy birthday to your son. That's awesome that he's got Lapa to play with. Sounds like exactly right right age, right, right demographic. Right age, the right personality for it. Yeah. He loves to build things, mm-hmm. he, uh, tinkering with things. Like, this is... We saw it... He saw it in a magazine or something he had. And I'm like, awesome. Yep. Yeah, it's a hit. He really... cool. Your daughter was uh, hanging out and watching him build stuff, too? Oh, yeah. She was sitting there with him the entire time. Awesome. Um, very excited by it, too. Nah, so. That's cool. That's cool. She's the, she's the younger. I always feel like there's the younger sibling sitting next to the older sibling. Mm-hmm. Going like, let me see that. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely had some of that growing up. <clears throat> yeah. You always had to play second player. Always, which is fine because mario's fucking red and red's trash there you go so <laughs> which actually i didn't mention uh best thing about unravel 2 is that you can change the colors of your character so you can get rid of the red so but you have to play as the red don't you no but you can change the color you can be orange you can be purple oh like you can you can just you can, change okay yeah you change the yarn color so i have blue and i have like a maroon maroon's fine there you red. go no that's how i am ah uh. Um, so yeah, this is our first uh, episode of covering E3. We'll be back again next week talking about the rest of the week's news, and then we'll meet up Wednesday, and that'll be fun. Yep, so that'll looking, be great. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you up there at E3. Everyone else, thanks for listening. Looking forward to uh, bringing you more news from E3 next week. All right, talk to everyone later. See ya.